Hello, I'm Cynthia Brooks from Fire and Glory International Ministries, and it is a pleasure for me to come before you one more time. It's always a, a blessing. It's always a joy to be able to just come and, and give the word of the Lord uh, from his word. It's, I live by this word. You know, the Bible says a word is a lamp unto my feet. And it really is because it gives us direction on how we need to live, how we need to walk, how we operate with one another. And we're living in a day when uh, people just don't know now how to live. We see so much uh, uh, mental illness and, dis and and people being disturbed by the things that they see on the earth with all of the uh, crazy weather uh, conditions around the world uh, with with, with uh, earthquakes and and we watch suffering you know constantly we see suffering in the land and it's and not just in our nation but in in men, in almost every nation we're watching this back to back. Uh, it used to be that, that we would hear of things happening once in a while, but but now it's like several times a week we're hearing uh, terrible news across the globe. And so I, you know, I've I've heard people talk about, you know, I'm you know being so fearful. How we just you know here we go with you know all of these different variants coming on the scene and whether they should take the jab or not or uh, just just concerned about everything and then we we're watching when we see society in a place of fear we also watch them in a place of you know me 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 I, I got to look out for myself you know I have to live for the day because I don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow and as as uh, as we see time constantly move on and people are concerned about their personal welfare so often we see where they're not concerned about the next person and so we see this this place as people begin to pull away from god we see where they move into a place of it's all about me and it's all about how i feel and we see this narcissistic behavior and then we see people who talk about being Christians. You know, that's the little word. I'm a Christian. And don't have a clue what that means. Won't lift their hand to the poor. Won't bless anybody. Everything they do, it got a price tag on it. You better give me this for whatever I do for you. If I provide uh, some sort of kindness, I want to be compensated in some kind of way. And that's all we see is I want to be compensated. I want, you know, how much you're going to give me, uh, you know, what are you going to do for me? And we're just seeing this behavior that is really unnatural. But it's becoming more and more common. And so I want to talk today about this uh, time we're in. And I hear people say, you know, I've asked people, you know, if, if, you, if you were to die today, where do you think you will spend eternity? And you know the answer that I get most times now is, uh, I'm 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 gonna be with God. Or the the second answer would be, I don't know. But nobody ever ever consider you might be hell bound, and they don't consider it, and 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 they don't even know what it is to be ex acceptable. What is a, an acceptable behavior before God? They have lost their way. And, and, and even, even those who profess have lost their way of knowing what is acceptable to God and what is not acceptable. And so I want to come before you today out of, the, out of Psalms. You know, I love uh, David's, uh, how he just wrote these love letters to God and how he wrote of those things that were so... Uh, dear to his heart about God. I even love when he says, you know, I meditate on your word, you know, during, during, during the midnight hours, you know, during the wee hours of the night, what come, what, you know, I guess when he would wake up, what would come to his mind is the word of God. Now, you know, that's really loving God. That's really focusing on God. When you can sit back and, and wake up during the night and that's your first thought, what's important to God. And it should be all of our, our first thoughts. You know, before you open up your eyes in the morning, when you realize that you have, uh, you are still here or you're waking up, 
Jesus should be the first thing on your mind. Thanking him for bringing you through the night because there's so many who have not made it through the night. So I want to talk about Psalms 15. It says, Lord, and this is David asking, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Or another way of saying that is, is who may dwell or who may abide, who may live, who may settle, who may lodge, who may inhabit, who may rest or who may stay. You see how powerful that word is? Who may dwell? Who is, who's going to just be in this place of dwelling, of staying and inhabiting, of resting, of chilling in your tabernacle? Who is going to be before you? He said, who may dwell in your holy hill? Who's going to dwell before you, God? Who's going to dwell in that, that, that wonderful secret place where you are? Who is going to dwell? What type of person, God, is going to be able to come before your holy hill, your presence, come before you? Who's going to dwell before you forever and ever, time without end? And in verse 2, it says, he who walks uprightly. In other words, the person who is walking and righteousness. You go, what is righteousness? Righteousness is simply God's way of doing things. Who is righteous before the Lord? Who is doing what God say to do? And as this is this is a person whose lifestyle is is right before God. That that the person who walks with integrity, the person who deals honestly. This is the person who deals uprightly and who works righteously, it says, righteousness before God and speaks the truth in his heart. Those who have a sincere heart, they speak the truth in their heart. You know, a lot of times people walk around with, with negative thoughts, negative feelings in their heart. They really don't consider God, but they walk around with these negative feelings. And you know, God knows the heart. People look at what they see, but God knows the heart. And you know, sometimes a person can say something and that that's not quite how they may feel about someone or how they may feel about something, but it might be the way they express themselves. And then it's taken really harsh by someone else. But God knows the heart. Many people cannot take correction. They can't take correction. Not even from God. They can't take correction. They can't steal themselves long enough to say, who am I? What am I really about? They can't even steal themselves long enough to say that. You know, when, it, when, when, when the, when the uh, rubber meets the road, the one thing we need to be able to examine ourselves about is, who am I? You know, is my heart righteous before God? Now, that doesn't say that you never make a mistake. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is when you do make a mistake, is, is there a sense of God, I want to please you and only you? You know, we please God. We would definitely please man who is also operating like God, who speaks the truth in his heart, my heart should be pliable and clean before God. Verse 3 says, he who does not backbite with his tongue. You know, they're not uh, dealing with slander or gossip. You, you don't have time to, to sit back and, oh, you know, let me tell you what so-and-so says. And you're gossiping about other people. Backbite. You don't have time for that. Um, Nor does evil to his neighbor. You know, there, I remember my mom back when I was a teenager and uh, before I left home, when I was a teenager, and my mom um, put down some fertilizer in her yard, in her yard, yard. my mother loves an impeccable lawn, and her yard, she put some, some uh, fertilizer down, and then our neighbor, but what happened, um, some of the fertilizer got on my neighbor's lawn, because, you know, they're right next to each other. And uh, my neighbor was so upset. My mom's neighbor was so upset that when we woke up two nights later, two days later, my mom's lawn was all yellow, all the 
all on the side of the front yard, you know, half the yard was yellow because our neighbor became angry and thought that was a deliberate act and and did something, poured fertilizer, whatever they did on my mom's yard. And I thought, now why would they automatically assume that this was a deliberate act against them? My mom didn't even see it. She didn't even know it was done. And instead of the neighbor bringing it to her, and my mom could have probably done something, reseeded the yard or whatever you do to fix a yard up. You, you notice, I don't know what to do with a yard. I have a husband who do that. But, you know, my mom could have, or my dad could have did something to fix the yard up or would have paid for the damages. But, but to, instead of just talking as neighbors, talking, they just came and damaged my parents' yard. And I thought, how, how incredibly immature. You don't do your neighbor wrong. But I've seen this in many times in my life where, where neighbors would do something ugly to other neighbors, you know, uh, throw, throw trash in their yard just because they don't like them or whatever. We're not supposed to, to do wrong to our neighbor. Who is our neighbor? It's those that we live around. I am so blessed to have good neighbors. We look out for each other. And, you know, and, and, and this, this is the way it should be. Your neighbor, you should be kind to your neighbor. Look out to, for your neighbor. But this is what it said. There's no e evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. You don't tell a tall tale or lie or come against your friend. If it's a friend, it's a friend. You don't become an enemy to a friend. You bless your friends. You take care of your friends. You cover your friends. I have some great friends. I have friends that I've had for many years. We're still friends, even though we may not even talk very often. But when we need each other, we're there for each other. You know, I'm 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 kind of I'm not the kind of person that I run around with people. You know, with people all the time. I'm pretty much pretty much a loner, and and it's okay. But I have friends. I'm a loner with friends, and and even with my friendships, um, I know who my friends are, and and they know me. My friends are loners too, so it works really well because they're 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 people who are you know kind of quiet and you know kind of stay to yourself. But when we when we talk, we could talk. We know we know we're there for each other, and that's what a friend is. You got to know each other, not 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 sit back and 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 blame your neighbor or shame your neighbor or lie about your neighbor or or tell tales and secrets about your neighbors. No, no reproach to your neighbors. You know we have to make sure that we are are respecting our neighbors. We're treating our neighbors right. And and verse, um, I mean, our friends right, your neighbors too. See, you treat your neighbors and your friends right. In other words, you just do good to people the same way you would want people to do good to you. Bless people. You know, I, I even say this when it comes to, to marriages. I've been married now for uh, 49 years. Married for 40 and I feel like I was a kid when I married. I guess I pretty much was. But I've been married for 49 years. I never tried to do dirt because something was done to me. And I, I believe in forgiving, forgiving each other. And my husband is the same way. I'm not saying that, you know everything is always wonderful with us. You know, we, we, we're a real couple. We are, we are a real couple. And, and we may have a disagreement or whatever, but that disagreement does not last for more than a few hours. Because we know that you can't keep a marriage together if you're going to be against each other and think of your, your, your spouse as your enemy. I've seen it happen quite a bit. And that is a travesty when the spouse becomes your enemy. Mm. Verse 4, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, you don't have nothing to do with a, with a person who is evil. You don't want to have anything to do with a person who keeps trouble up, whether it's in the church, in your marriage, in your, on your job, in your school. You know, if they are a person who is toxic, you know, back up. Get away from toxic people. Toxic people would never make you feel whole, healthy, happy, or at peace. Because a toxic person, they don't have peace. And I've said this before. Toxic people don't know what it means to operate out of peace. So you don't want to have anything to do with them. 
You can be kind if you happen to be around them. But if you don't happen to be around, you don't have to be around them or you don't happen to be around them, don't. Because they will never bring peace to your soul. I believe in walking and, and living and, and breathing with a healthy attitude where my emotions are as as calm as I can get them. And I'm not going to deal with people that's going to keep my blood pressure up. I'm not going to deal with people like that. You know, I, I see people who have friends that way. And they'll tell you, well, my friend is no good. Which always make me feel like, well, where are they, where are they your friends? You know, I even talked to to uh, one of my grand, two of my granddaughters about that. You know, I said if 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 your if your friends turn against you, or if your friends are talking against you, not to help you but to hurt you, leave them alone, move on. You know, and sometimes friends would be together. And they they may discuss another friend, like well, well this friend has a problem, or whatever, and, and th that's okay. But it's not a thing where you go, we, let's, let's, let's just bash this person. Let's just turn against this person. That's not what you want to do. You know, I always find, try to find a solution or, or find good when you're dealing with other people. And then it says, verse, it says uh, verse 4, but honors those who fear the Lord. I honor those. Oh, my goodness. Those who love the Lord, who reverence God. I honor them. Those are the kind of people I want to be around. The people who honor and fear the Lord, who reverence His pace, His presence, who reverence Him, and because if you re you understand, if you reverence God, you would reverence other people. And you know, it, it's it's wonderful because we look at ministry and we go, "Oh, ministry is you know it's awesome when 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 it's working well." You know, you go out and you you you're doing healings and and deliverance, and you're doing all this sort of thing. And that's wonderful. But you know that everyday living is. Uh, from day to day is honoring people who honor God. Having a relationship with people who have a relationship with God. Or else, what do you have to talk about? You know, I talk to people all the time. I don't care what they're going through. They could be going through the hardest trial. And, and at, at the end of telling me what may be going on in their life, they always come back and say, but God is good. Or but God sees, or God will deliver. He He is always in our conversations. You know, I, I can't have a conversation without God. I can't be with people who don't even recognize or realize that God is capital I S. He is dot 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 any and everything we need. That's who He is. He who swears his own hurt and does not change. Listen, you know what that 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 thing right there is so deep. That that's not saying. Well, I swear I'm gonna do this. Not that. But if you do that, you better keep your keep your word. Here's the thing. When you tell a person you're gonna do something, or you tell a person, "Well, I'm gonna be there for you," or you tell a person, "Yes, I'm gonna do this," do it, do it, keep your word. Even, you, even if you say, well, I, I, I said I was going to do this, but I can't. Sometimes there are things that happen that you got to keep your word. Uh, you can't get out of. Most times you tell somebody you're going to do something. Maybe an emergency come up on your on your, your your part and you can't do it. Be honest enough and tell them, I can't do this. Something's going on. But for the most part, we have to be to the point where we understand one thing, and that is, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I tell you, I, I, I tell you, I'm going to do this. And then I sit back in my heart and go, I don't want to do that. That's wrong. That's not what I'm going to do. That's not what I'm about. And that's what no, no one should be about. We need to keep our word. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. And if you can't do it, let it be on your part. Let the person say, okay, that's fine. I'll release you from this. You know, I don't want anybody, even if someone tell me they're going to do something, if they find that they can't do it, I want them to tell me, I can't do this. And then I I really want to be able to say, fine. I, I've never held anybody, held anything to anybody when they couldn't do it. You know, I I, I just didn't know if I knew that they said, you know, if it's something that's really important and I say, 
I need this to be done and I need you to keep your word. And they tell me, well, oh, I'm in, I'm all in. I'm going to keep my word. I expect you to do it. Just like I expect you to be able to trust my word the same way. Our word is our bond. And the next one, verse five says, he who does not put out his money at usury. Listen, let me don't charge interest. If someone need money from you and you give them money, if you give them ten dollars, don't don't say, well, you gotta pay back, you gotta pay me back twenty, or you gotta pay, no, excuse me, I mean twenty, you gotta pay me back twelve dollars. I gave you ten, but I want two dollars back from you. No, if they if they borrow ten, let them give you back ten. Why would you charge them more than what they ask you for? This is what the word is saying. Don't ask them for, to, don't expect them to give you back more money than what they 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 got from you. You. Why would you do that? See, we got to be fair in this life. I don't care what the world do. I don't care what the world do. I don't even care what business, businesses do. If someone has gotten money from you, only take back what you've loaned. It's, it's okay to lend. Now, some people like givers, they give and never expect a dime back. Others lend. It's nothing wrong with being a lender. But do not charge usury or charge interest because they borrowed from you. And it says, nor does he take a bribe against, his, against the innocence. You never take a bribe. You know, some people will lie for money. Give me money and I'll tell you what you want to hear. That should never be from, from the mouth of, of a believer in Jesus Christ. That should never be. We never take a bribe against innocent people. Never. And the last one, he who does these things, I love this, shall never be moved. If you keep these things that is written here in, in Psalms 15, you should never be moved. Your feet will be stable. You will never be persuaded to, to move against the will of the word of God. You will be sound in how you walk before God. And when someone asks you the question, if you died today, where do you think you would be? Your answer would be with the Lord for real. It won't be, I hope I'm going to be with the Lord. It would be, I'm going to be with the Lord. We have to make sure that our our our, our walk is is pleasing to Father by the way we live our everyday life. Not to get money, not to gain, uh, you know, uh, the applause of men. You know who I want to be ple pleasing me? The Lord. You know what the word says? Jesus says what he's going to say to us after we do all these things on this earth and we make sure that we are blessing people, blessing and being a blessing. You know, I'm I'm blessed because God has blessed me. And because I am blessed, I will bless others. But I don't need anybody to pat me on the back about that because you know I know my reward is in heaven. I don't need I don't need any any you know any big rewards now. I, I know where mine is gonna come from. You will never have to worry, and you never have to be moved by or in fear by the things that's hidden in this earth because when you know that you are in right standing with God between God and man what is there to fear what what is there to fear you know there's a lot of things going on in this earth right now and then we live in such a difficult time and, and we really do but then on the other hand we are living at a time where we can do self-examination. We can look at ourselves and say, how am I living before God? Don't ever think that God does not know what you're doing. We will give an account one day of how we walked on this earth. We'll give an account. And I want to hear those words. Well done. Thy good and thy faithful servant not from the mouth of man but from the mouth of God if you don't know if you can't honestly say if you can't just put your faith in the fact that you will see God check your walk go back to Psalms 15 check your walk check yourself against that check yourself 
Do you love God? And if you love God, you will love people. And you can check yourself with this. You know, how is your lifestyle before God and men? How do you treat people? Do you forgive quickly? You know, we, we, can't, we can't stop people from hurting us. We can't stop people from disrespecting us. We can't stop people from having negative attitudes or feelings for us. But what we can stop is how we look back at them. And I don't care how angry somebody make you. I don't care how they may have hurt your feelings. At one point, you have to sit back and say, that's water under the bridge. That's just water under the bridge. God knows my heart. And you know, we can say a lot of things. We can do a lot of things. But as long as we know how to ask God for forgiveness and also forgive others the way we want to be forgiven. A lot of people say, I, I, you know, they, they need to come to me for, and, and, and tell me they're sorry. But do you tell people you're sorry? No, most people don't. So I just want you to look at your law, your walk. Look at your love walk. Is it pleasing to God? And if it is, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank him because he has shown you a better way to live. I just bless you that you will have an awesome week. And that you would thank God for every moment that you have, that you can breathe, that you can see, that you can hear, that you can love, that you can touch people. I just want you to remember that life is a blessing. It is a gift. It is a gift. It's a beautiful gift that God has given us. Don't take it for granted. But be, be, be happy that you have another day to get it right and another day to bless other people. Amen. I bless you today as you stand before God and you stand before him in righteousness and he knows, he knows that your heart is tender toward him and toward others. Love God because he deeply loves you. Amen. Be blessed.